This LOS is solve time value of money problems for different frequencies of compounding. Okay, this is compounding for different frequencies. So again, I have a little table here at the bottom. We're going to look at uh, just an example using one year. So n is going to equal one in this example. So uh, starting at the top, we have the algebraic formula that should be familiar to us now. It's uh, similar to what we saw in the uh, last LOS. The uh, future value equals the present value times one plus the interest rate divided by m. m is the number of compounding periods per year uh, to the power of mn. And so n was the number of years. So in the bottom, uh, our example here at the bottom, we're just doing n equals one again. So I'm not going to run through all the examples, 8% for the uh, annual, semi-annual, quarter, monthly, daily. Let's just pick on uh, this one here, the quarterly. So, uh, and here we're going to look at uh, the value of uh, just $1. We're doing $1. So it's uh, the uh, uh, future value equals the present value times 1 plus 8% divided by 4 because it's quarterly to the power of 4 uh, times 1. So we can see that um, we're going to uh, get a uh, dollar eight, and um, so the effective rate on quarterly is eight point two four three two. So again, if we want to, uh, if we want to do on the calculator using the algebra, let's just do it again. 0 0.08 percent divided by four quarterly plus one y to the x just four because we're doing uh, just one year four times one minus one times 100 and you can see our effective uh, annual yield 8.24432 um, okay which is there also you can still use your interest rate conversion so remember second interest rate conversion nominal interest rate is eight hit enter arrow up it's uh, four quarterly, hit enter, arrow up, hit compute, 8.24322. So it's exactly the same. So there, uh, this slide is uh, nothing really new. It's very similar to what we did in the last LOS. Uh, we have the algebra that we can do. We can use the interest rate conversion or um, uh, down here, which is just showing you all the steps in terms of here's the uh, interest rate nominal divided by the M. Uh, MN, which is the, uh, again, N was one, and then the future value of the one dollar. Okay. Uh, the very last thing here, though, we have the continuous compounding. This is going to be new, and we're going to see this quite a bit in the next few slides. So the continuous compounding, I'm going to show you how to do the keystrokes on continuous. I wrote, uh, I wrote the keystrokes here for you. So it's going to be 0.088%, and then we're going to hit the second key, E to the X, minus one, okay, times 100. And you're gonna see that the continuous compounding, 8.328711, so it's just a little bit more than the daily. So the continuous and the daily are often very uh, similar, but they're not exact. Okay, here we're just gonna look at a little example. Suppose your bank offers you a CD, certificate of deposit, with a two-year maturity, a stated annual interest rate of 8% compounded quarterly and a feature allowing reinvestment of the interest, so it's compounding at the uh, same interest rate. You decide to invest $10,000. What will the CD be worth at maturity? Okay, so you can see it's a two-year maturity and it's compounding quarterly so that our uh, number of periods is going to be eight, correct? That's our N, two years, and our M is four quarterly. So N times N is gonna be eight, okay? Now our interest rate is gonna be 8%, but it's compounding quarterly. So the interest rate per period is gonna be the 2%. So again, you can do it uh, using the algebra, 10,000 times one plus 0.08 divided by four to the power of eight. So that equals 10,000 times 1.02 to the power of eight we're going to get 11,716 and, uh, and uh, 59 cents. So again, uh, let's just do that uh, quickly uh, on the calculator again. It's going to be 0 0.08 divided by four quarterly plus one. Now you got to be careful here. It's y to the x eight because it's quarterly for two years. 
and then we're going to multiply that by our original ten thousand dollars oh I went too far and eleven thousand seven hundred sixteen point five nine three eight one fantastic now the holding period uh, yield you can see uh, effective yield holding period yield is going to be seventeen point one six um, five nine four percent okay and the way we, we do that is we just uh, we just run that same formula that we saw the last LOS it's going to be uh, 0 0.08 divided by 4 plus 1 y to the x 8 minus 1 times by 100 and that's going to be 17.16594 okay and you can just prove that to yourself because the holding period it's the ending minus the beginning divided by the beginning times 117.16594%. Um, so I just want to show you if you really hate algebra and uh, the old school you forgot your calculator you just have your phone then you know listen this is not too much it's only eight uh, it's only eight periods you started with 10,000 you know that the interest rate is 8% quarterly so it's two percent per per uh, period and it's for eight periods you could do ten thousand times 1.02 once twice three four five six seven eight and if you do that you're going to get the exact same number that's the way that i sometimes teach it to the non-algebra um, you know non-calculator caring people and it's really easy it's just ten thousand times 1.02 eight times and you're going to get the same answer Okay, another way you can solve the same problem though is just using the time value of money functionality on the calculator. So here we have N, IY, PV, payment, and the future value. So in this case, uh, we can see that um, the compounding periods, it's going to be quarterly. Um, so I have to do second periods per year four. Oh, I had it on daily here before. So I'm going to hit four and I'm going to hit uh, enter. So we have to set the parameter to the question. Okay, and also we want to be in the ending mode. We're in the ending mode. We're not in beginning mode. So we know that um, this was for two years. So we can do two second and n is going to give us n equals eight. Or you could have just typed eight and then n. But you can also do two years second and n because you set the parameter py equals uh, four. You're going to get the same number. So n equals eight. Uh, the interest rate is uh, 8%, so 8 IY. We don't adjust it because we already set up the parameter as quarterly. So we put in the 8%. We put in the nominal rate, okay? The present value is 10,000. So that's 10,000 going out of our pocket. 10,000 negative PV. One has to be negative. One has to be positive, okay? There's zero payments. And then I'm going to compute the future value, and I get that 17,716 and uh, 59 cents exactly the same as we did um, using the algebra and again the holding period yield ending minus beginning divided by beginning times 100 it's our 17.16 uh, percent a quick little practice question for you the value in six years of 75,000 invested today at a stated annual interest of seven percent compounded quarterly is closest to a 112,555 B, 113,300, or C, 113,733? Okay, the answer is C, 113,733. On the left-hand side, I just reminded you the algebra, but I'm not going to work my way through it. It's a lot easier to do it on the calculator, okay? So again, using the time value of money. So I'm just going to see this is uh, done quarterly. So second, PY, uh, sorry, just uh, second, PY, yeah, it's still, it's still set at quarterly, so that's fine, no problems. So the N, we have to see it's uh, it's uh, six years uh, compounded quarterly. So again, you know, uh, you can hit six, the years, and then just do second and N, you're going to get the 24. That's an easier and safer way to do it, I believe. Okay? The present value is going to be 75,000 out of your pocket, so 75,000. I'm going to do the plus minus key because it's money out of our pocket. That's our present value. The interest rate is 7%. So it's 7 
IY. Again, we don't adjust it because we've already set up the parameter PY equals 4. We put in that 7%. That's the way that I prefer to uh, solve the problems. Again, there's no payment, and we're going to simply compute the future value, 113.733.20. 113.733.20. Point two one rounding if the answer is C. Okay, another quick practice problem. The manager of a Canadian pension fund knows that the fund must make a lump sum payment of five million ten years from now. So that's in the future. Five million must be made. Okay. Uh, she wants to invest the amount today in a GIC so that it'll grow to the required amount. The, that's going to be the future value, five million ten years from now. The current interest rate on the GIC is six percent a year compounded monthly. How much should she invest today in the GIC? So we want to know how much today. That's a present value question. Okay, here's the solution. On the left hand side I've got the algebra. I don't want to spend a lot of time going through it because it's really easy to do on the calculator. But nevertheless there's the algebra. A little bit of a difference here. It's, it's a present value question. So the present value equals the future value times 1 plus the interest rate divided by the uh, frequency of compounding. But because it's the present value, or y to the x, we're putting it uh, to the negative, negative mm. You see there? There's a negative there. So again, uh, here's the algebra uh, on the left-hand side. The present value equals 5 million times 1 plus the 6% compounded uh, monthly, but it's to the power of negative 120, okay? So I even gave you the, the, the uh, keystrokes down here for the people that love the algebra. 0 0.06 divided by 12 equals plus 1 y to the x, 120, hit the plus minus key because it's negative, equals times the 5 million, you'll get the 2.748 million, okay? But to do it on the calculator, it's a lot easier. So we're compounding monthly, so we're going to do second PY. Remember, we had it on quarterly from the last question. So we're going to hit 12, and we're going to hit enter. So now we're set up for our monthly. Okay, so then the uh, it's for 10 years, so we can do 10 second nn, so it's n equals 120, which is uh, 10 years times monthly, uh, 120. Interest rate is 6%, 6 iy, as I said, no adjustments there, because we've already uh, changed our parameter. There's no payments, okay. The future value that we want, we want this 5 million, and I'm going to keep it positive in the future. So in this case, we're just going to compute the present value, and it's 2.748163.67. So $2,748,163.67. Uh, okay? So whether you like the algebra, uh, that's fine, but I think it's a lot easier to use the uh, time value of money functionality on the calculator. Okay, I put this question in. You have to think a little bit and uh, perhaps do more than one calculation in the 90 seconds. So a money manager has a million to invest uh, for one year. She's identified three alternative one-year certificates. Uh, which CD has the highest effective annual rate? So you can see CD1 is compounding monthly and the annual interest rate nominal is 7.82. CD2 is quarterly and the nominal interest rate is uh, 8%. And the last one is compounding continuously, and the interest rate is 7.95%. So which one has the highest uh, effective annual rate? One, two, or three? Okay, you can see here on the left-hand side, I've got the algebra, and uh, including the keystrokes to run it uh, continuously. And uh, the correct answer is going to be, um, uh, uh, it's the continuously so the correct answer is CD3 and uh, but what I did because for small amounts and uh, short periods of time what I did is I just solved it using the time value of money functionality if I couldn't remember the keystrokes for the continuous compounding which happens to some students remember uh, I'm looking here at monthly quarterly or continuously if I can't remember exactly how to do the uh, keystrokes for the continuously, the second d to the x, etc. I can maybe use 365 days daily compounding as a proxy because we know for small amounts, short periods of time, the result is going to be very, very quick. So again, this is going back to using our interest rate conversion functionality. So I'm going to do second uh, interest rate conversion. The first one is going to nominal interest rate 7.82. So 7 dot 8 2. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to arrow up 
and it's compounding monthly, so that's 12. I'm going to hit enter, arrow up, and I'm going to hit compute, and I'm going to have 8.01646. So that's right, I've got that there, 8.10646. And now, again, I, I'll show you this is really easy than doing the algebra. I can just arrow back down to my nominal interest rate. I'm going to hit 8 for my second one, uh, CD2, hit enter, arrow up. That's quarterly, four, enter, arrow up, hit compute again, 8.24. Aha, 8.24322, so now that's higher. Now I know, um, as I said, if I, do, if I do daily, I know that continuously would be a little bit higher actually. So let me just do, I'm uh, gonna arrow down, and I'm gonna do the nominal interest rate is 7.95. I'm gonna hit enter, sorry, um, I, I uh, my type keystrokes there, uh, 7.95, enter, and I'm gonna arrow up, and that's continuously, as I said, as a proxy, I'm just gonna use 365, hit enter, arrow up, and I'm gonna hit compute, 8.27362. Aha, 8.27362, uh, uh, CD3 on daily is giving me the highest rate, so I know continuously is gonna be a little bit higher, so it has to be CD3. But if you wanna remember the exact keystrokes, it would be 0 0.0795, I'm gonna do second e to the x, right? Minus one equals, and then uh, times 100. And so for the continuous compound, you can see 8.27456. So just a little bit higher than the 8.27362. So that's a little trick. For small amounts, short periods of time, if you're panicked uh, on the continuous compounding, not getting it, then uh, sometimes you can use a proxy, use the daily, you're gonna be close enough. Okay, here's a little bit more practice on the continuous uh, compounding. So we've got the algebraic formula at the top. But let's look at the example, and here I give you the exact keystrokes. Suppose you have 10,000 investment, will earn 8% compounded continuously for two years. What's the future value on that? Okay, so here I've got the keystrokes, uh, starting with the first bullet. It's gonna be 0 0.08 times 8% times the two years. I'm gonna hit my equal sign. Then I'm gonna do my second, e to the x, okay, times 10,000 equals 11,735.10871, okay? So as I said here, a quick way to check, just a reality check, is that if I just ran it using uh, 365 again, so second uh, periods per year, uh, 365 daily, enter. So I know that um, N is gonna be two years times, uh, um, sorry, it's gonna be two second NN, so it's gonna be 730, because it's for two years. Interest rate is 8%, 8IY, okay? Present value is 10,000, gonna make it negative out of my pocket, PV. No payment, and I'm gonna compute the future value, 11734.02. You can see I'm just within 26 cents, actually. So again, for small amounts, short periods of time using 365 daily compounding uh, gives us an answer that's quite close to our continuous compounding because sometimes students have a hard time remembering the keystrokes. 0 0.08 times two equals second e to the x and then multiplied by that present value amount, 10,000, and that's how you do it. So here's a good little practice problem that would uh, be typical of something that you might see on the uh, CFA. So an investor deposits 2,000 pounds into an account that pays continuously with an interest rate of 6%, okay? The value of the account at the end of four years is closest to A, 2,525 pounds, 2,542 pounds, or C, 2,854 pounds. Okay, the correct answer is B. So let's just do it on the calculator uh, using the, uh, the proper keystrokes first. So again, it's 6% for four years so, uh, continuously compounding. So 0 
zero six times by that four years. Don't forget to hit the equal sign. Then second e to the x, and then we just multiply by that two thousand pounds that we're going to invest. Hit equals two five four two dot four nine eight. So it works. And again, as I said, if you want to just check if you couldn't remember that, and this was a question on the exam, I think that you could still get it right if you did the second and uh, kept it in the daily. So we know that it was 2,000 uh, out of our pocket is our present value, okay? Interest rate, 6% IOI. It's for four years, so four, second, and N, okay? Uh, zero payment and compute the future value, 2542.448. So it gives us a, a, an answer that's very similar. So again, I said works for smaller amounts, but be careful, because we're gonna see here in the next and final practice question that you need to be a little bit careful and you have to understand how to compute the uh, continuously compounding, um, because, uh, uh, well, you'll see why. Okay, so here's a question. Given a million uh, euro investment for four years and a stated interest rate of uh, 3% compounded continuously, the difference in its interest earnings compared with the same investment compounded daily is closest A, a euro, B, six euros, or C, 455 euros. So in this, there's no choice, uh, folks. You can't use the little method of compounding daily because they want you to compare it against the compounded continuously. Okay, the correct answer here is B, folks. So let's just do it the proper way on the calculator first, the continuously compounding. So uh, we know it's 3% and it's going to be uh, 3% and it's um, uh, for four years. Okay, so it's 0 0.03 times by four. Don't forget your equals. Second, e to the x. Multiply that by our million euros. One, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we're going to hit equals. And so we're going to get one, one, two, seven, four, nine, six, dot eight, five, two. That'll be our future value. Okay. Now we need to compare it versus the daily compounding. That should be so easy for you by now. Second PY, just check. It's still in the uh, daily mode. So that's going to be a million euros goes out of our pocket. So I'll make that a negative present value. The interest rate is 3%, 3 IY. And it's for four years, four second NN, okay? Uh, no payments. And we're going to compute the future value. And I'm getting 1 million, 127, uh, 491 dot 292. So I can see, uh, I can see, I don't even really need to do it on my calculator. I can see it's five, you know, it's around five and change. So A, it can't be one, it's not one euro and it's not 455. So it's six. But if I just want to hit equals there and I subtract it just to finish it off, the one, one, two, seven, four, nine, six, dot eight, five, two. The difference is five euros and 56. So it's closest to B, 5.56 difference, closest to B, six. So if you get, uh, you know, if you forgot the keystrokes, you might have guessed A, but no, because I said small amounts, short periods of time, there's not much different, but on a million euros for four years, we have a difference of about six uh, euros. So in this question, unless you could remember how to do the continuously compounding, if you forgot, then you'd be guessing and that wouldn't be great. And that's the end of this LOS. Thank you.